No, just means have a heart attack. <laughs> Rather like it. Yes, you do know there's already a British Heart Foundation. Is there? In fact, there are quite a few heart charities. What about kidneys? Loads. There isn't one for the terminally vain. Mrs. Raven, you cannot die from vanity. Can you? Janet, can we discuss the speech? I want it to be really great. Of course we can. Come on in. I tell you, Janet, I am so happy. Oh, that's great. What is it? Volcano in Peru. Anyway, about this speech. I was just wondering, should I start with a quote from Plato? Hang on, hang on. What about the volcano? What about it? Well, shouldn't you go and plug it up? I could do. But, Janet, volcanoes are a natural way for the planet to release its pent-up energy and regenerate the Earth. Yeah, an active volcano is a good thing. Not if you're living on one. <laughs> George, you have people to save. Yes, well, I was thinking about that too. But if I saved everyone, the world would simply be overpopulated. And you're always complaining about how you can't get a table at the pizzeria. <laughs> God, I knew there'd be a catch. Just go and plug it. Right. <laughs> Morning, Ollie. Sleep well? I'm not speaking to you this morning. Why not? If I've got to paint Granny and Grandpa, I want the credit for it. I don't like being used. You can't have the credit for it. And make sure it's a nice painting. I don't like what you've done to ours. Daddy's on the news again. And today the world is seriously concerned about the mental state of Thermo Man. He appears to be thinking. Oh, no. Yesterday, he rescued several Peruvians from the side of an active volcano, but later he returned them to the danger zone. Then, later, he rescued them again. Oh, Ollie, this thinking stuff isn't good for a superhero. I know. It's like members of a girl band having GCSEs. <laughs> George... I'm not sure about these scratchings. They're making you different to how you used to be. Nonsense. And it's not different to, it's different from. They're starting to literally change you. And that's a split infinitive. Please, try and speak properly, Janet. Bobby, shall I hit him or will you? <laughs> He's become impossible, Arnie. He's so picky. Did you say anything to him? Yeah, I said if he didn't shut up, he'd be sleeping on the couch. What did he say? He said it isn't a couch, it's a sofa. A couch has only got one arm. <laughs> He's become addicted, Arnie. Has Mrs. Raven named the date yet? Hmm. Valentine's Day. Oh, that's romantic. Historically, that's the day St. Valentine was crucified. <laughs> she sent me a prenuptial agreement now. I hereby agree that Mrs. Raven is my wife and that I am her property. She can use me as she wants and in the event of a cash crisis, sell my body parts to raise funds. <laughs> right. What's she agreeing to? I hereby agree to do all the washing and ironing and clean the toilet. Well, that's not bad. No, that's me too. She hasn't agreed to anything. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure the wedding will be nice. I always cry at weddings. You won't be the only one. <laughs> Just been to China. Village on fire. Please tell me you put it out. No, contraire. I let the conflagration run its course, and then I give the villagers a lecture on fire prevention. If I keep putting the fires out, they're never going to learn. Right. That's it. You've got to stop eating those things. You're addicted. I am not addicted, Janet. The definition of an addict is somebody who is so dependent upon a substance that he or she cannot... ...function properly without that substance. <laughs> That's you! Right. No more. On your honour as a hero. Right, right. I can do that. I'm a hero. No more scratchings. What are you doing? Uh, nothing. I, I just need some fresh air. If you fly off, I'll never forgive you. I'm not going to fly off. Chance. George, how could you? Ollie, what are we going to do with him? It's a dilemma worthy of George Jacques Rousseau. <laughs> you fed them to him! I only want him to be clever. How dare you? How dare you? Janet! Ah, oh, Papa. Can't you stupid? <laughs> 
are you going? I'm taking Ollie away from you. It's us or them. You decide. You sure you want to go through with this, cuz? I want my family back. That means no more of these. Don't worry, T-Man. We'll put you on a substitute programme. Bacon flavoured crisps. <laughs> no, Tyler. I've got to go cold porky. <laughs> okay, cuz, you back to normal yet? I think so. Ask me a question. Who wrote Watership Down? Can't remember the actual rabbit's name. <laughs> what happened at the end of Titanic? We all got up and left the cinema. <laughs> yep, you're back to normal. Yes! There's just one small problem. There's a wedding anniversary in two hours, and you're down to make the speech. Well done, you two. <laughs> Forty years, eh, Stanley? I know. The great train robber's only got thirty. <laughs> you crack that joke once more and I'll stick that nine iron right up your ass, Sylvia. <laughs> oh, hello, George. We've just exchanged rings. It's a gallstone. <laughs> I hope you'll be very happy. Where's your ring, Arnie? You can't see Arnie's but I inserted it myself. Help me. <laughs> Janice. Holly. Hope the speech goes well, George. I'm sure it will. Listen, Janice. I've done the portrait for you, Daddy. Oh, thanks, Holly. It's up there, ready for you to unveil. Good. Listen, Janice, there's something... Ah, my man of the moment. Janice. All ready with your words of wisdom, I hope. Ella, I think you should get somebody else. Oh, it's too late to be modest now, George. You'll be fine. And as I said to Alan Titchmarsh at the launch of my new charity, Celebrities in Need. <laughs> Titchy, I said, if I had your money, I wouldn't still be doing my own gardening. <laughs> How we laughed. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> now I'm going to hand you over to George to say a few words about Ella and Stanley. You better not let us down. He's a changed man, Stanley. Um, we're here tonight to be with two very special human beings. Ella, you're an amazing woman, I think. Um, any other woman on earth would have been bored to death by Stanley years ago. <laughs> Droning on and on about his golf and his model railways, but not you. You may not love him, you may not even like him, but you've stuck by him, and that's what makes you amazing. <laughs> Stanley Dawkins, you're a saint. How you've put up with Ella all these years. <laughs> Without putting a bullet in her head, I'll never know. <laughs> Someone had to marry her, you did, and thanks to you, the rest of us can sleep easily in our beds. That a boy, George. No prisoners. Now, we've all had our bad days, but they've had 40 years of bad days. And they're still smiling. Well, they're still together. Anyway, uh, I don't want to keep you from your food, especially you, Ella. <laughs> and so I'd like to unveil this portrait which I've painted myself. I only hope it does your relationship justice. I give you Ella and Stanley. <laughs> oh my God. A proper husband would have stopped him. Unfortunately, I married an idiot. So that's a pot calling the kettle black and a damn big pot too. And I hate your hair. At least it doesn't come out of my ears. <laughs> I think we should stick to Wednesdays, don't you? But I should be wanting my ring back. That'll be a relief. <laughs> that was the most disgraceful, embarrassing, insensitive, thoughtless speech I have ever heard. Welcome back. <laughs>